Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be filming my December wrap up. It's already that time. Can you believe? has just gone by so incredibly fast. I can't believe the end is already here. In the month of December, I read 17 books and, you know, December was quite a hectic month for me. Just, you know, life-wise, uh, you know, I got my wisdom tooth surgery at the end of November and the recovery process for that took a lot longer than I was anticipating. Like, I was really out of it for like two weeks or so. And so that definitely played a part in how much I was able to read this month because unfortunately, you know, even with the recovery, there was a lot of times where I just didn't want to focus on anything. You know, like, I thought I would have so much more time to read during that time, but it was just kind of hard to concentrate on anything. And so I was only able to read 17 books this month. I know that sounds like a lot, but I read nine different manga this month and eight different novels. So I was reading quite a bit of manga this month, and I think I actually read my favorite manga that I've ever read so far this month, which is also very exciting. Before we do jump into today's video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the sponsor, which is Top Cash Back. Top Cash Back is a tool that I love using when I'm shopping online. Online. It's super easy to just go to their website and sign up. You can also add on a browser extension if you want to, which I would highly recommend doing. After signing up on their website, you'll be able to see that they have so many different categories of things that you can get cash back when you shop through them, like with travel, with home and garden, with bed and bath products, home products, tech products, fashion, fitness, health and beauty. There really is something on here for everyone. I personally love using Top Cash Back when it comes to, you know, book shopping because they do have thrift books available. You can get 3% cash back with thrift books. They also do have Target, which you can get 3.6% cash back and Amazon as well, which you can get up to 8% cash back through Amazon, which I think is just absolutely incredible. But you can search for any retailers that you're interested in shopping through to see if they have them on here and they'll pop up. And then when you find the retailer that you would like to shop through, you just click the get cash back now button and it will take you to the retailer's website through top cash back so that it's tracking your visit. And then from that point forward, you know, when I use thrift books, anything that I shop with, I will get 3% cash back with, which is so exciting. I know 3% cash back doesn't seem like a lot, but really when you consider how much money you spend on books, that starts to add up very quickly. I've been using top cash back for a while now, and I think it's so amazing how much money you can get back when you're spending money on books. It's so wild. It's also incredible to me that there are some retailers that have up to 10% cash back. So when you're spending $10, you're getting a dollar back, which is just incredible. They have over 7,000 retailers available available to shop through with Top Cash Back, and they offer 100% of their commission back to their members. And because of that, they consistently feature higher rates than their competitors. So go ahead and use the link down in my description to sign up for Top Cash Back today. There is no minimum for payout and you get a $10 sign up bonus when you spend at least $25. Thank you so much to Top Cash Back for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to the wrap up. So, you know, as mentioned, December was kind of a chaotic and busy month for me, just like reading wise, life wise, content wise, I did end up doing one reading vlog throughout this month. I wanted to do more, you know, because I originally, uh, I usually every December, I try to do like a rereading vlog, but I didn't reread a single book this month. I was just not really in a rereading mood. And so I only ended up doing the one reading vlog for the month of December. I'll have it linked down below if you missed it. But over on Patreon, I did have a few exclusive videos go up on Patreon this month. One of those was a video that was reacting to my 2022 TBR and goals video, which was really fun to see if I stuck to those goals and like spoiler alert, I didn't do very well with that. And then I also posted over on Patreon a 2022 favorites video that included things outside of books, like my favorite movies, my favorite music, my favorite TV shows, food, you know, different things like that. And then I also posted over on my Patreon, my 2022 vlog compilation video. These are videos that I love to make every single year. And the vlog compilation is where I take all of my vlog footage throughout the year and I kind of edit it into one song and it's really beautiful and it makes you feel all of the things. And this video is one that I made available for every tier on my Patreon. So no matter which tier you're on, you'll be able to see it. And that's always one of my favorite videos to make every single year. And so I'll have my Patreon linked down below if you want to consider joining. But yeah, this month I also did have one other DNF that I didn't mention because I did upload a video this month that was like every single book that I DNF this year. But after filming that video, I did have another DNF, which was Partners in Crime, which is kind of a bummer. You know, this is a new romance book. But unfortunately with this one, it just didn't end up being my thing. 
I got 40% of the way into this audiobook and I was just like, I don't really care about anything that's happening. I don't care about these characters. I don't care about the romance. But yeah, anyways, let's get started with the manga that I read this month because as mentioned, I read nine mangas this month. I read so much manga, which was great. I feel like manga was the perfect thing for me to be reading this month while I was dealing with a lot of different things, you know, because manga is just such a great thing to take my mind off of things and it's such a quick and easy read. So this month I did end up reading volumes four and five of Sweat and Soap, which is one of my favorite current romance series right now. In this romance series, we follow these two characters who both work in the same office. Like he's kind of the CEO and she works for the company. This manga series is just about their relationship. It is so fucking cute. Like I adore these two so freaking hard. I ended up giving both of these volumes four stars, but something that was so cool that I did not expect is that volume five actually takes place on Christmas Eve. And I read this on Christmas day. And I was like, how perfect is that? Like I did not plan that. And I love when that happens. Like that is so cool. I was also finally able to catch up on Spy Family. I was able to read volumes six, seven, and eight, which are all the current ones in the series. Like volume nine doesn't come out until next year. So I'm finally caught up on Spy Family. And volume six, I think I gave that one three stars. Like that was honestly one of my least favorite in the series so far. I just found it to be really slow and like not a lot was happening in that volume. But then volume seven, I ended up giving four stars. And volume eight, I ended up giving five stars. Like I freaking loved volume eight. I love where this series is headed. I feel like volume eight really represents everything that I love about this series, you know, because it, it had the cutest like family moments. It had so much action with like them being spies. It was just such a great time all around. I also ended up reading Blood on the Tracks volume four. This is another one of my favorite manga series at the moment. This is like a horror thriller type of series where we follow this son and his mother. Gosh, this series is just so unhinged. Like I feel like every volume just keeps getting more and more like oof, like brutal to read. And this one was no different. I think I ended up giving this one four stars. I feel like this author is just so good at writing so much into these characters' expressions, you know, because there's not a lot of dialogue or there's not a lot happening on page necessarily, but he's just so good at, you know, making their eyes just like so expressive. Like you can read so much into their emotions. And I just feel so much for this kid, like this little boy, like my heart fucking breaks for him. But this series is so good. It's so interesting. I cannot wait to read more. I also read Your Name Volume 1, which I was so excited to find this at my library because I'm a huge fan of the Your Name anime movie and I had no idea that there was a manga series that's based off of the anime. So apparently the anime came out first and then they decided to make a manga out of the anime. This is such a beautiful story. If you're unfamiliar with the story of Your Name, it basically follows these two teenagers. It's this boy who lives in Tokyo and then it's a girl who lives in a small town and one day they wake up and they have swapped bodies and she wakes up in his body in Tokyo and he wakes up in her body and they're trying to figure out how this could be possible. It's also kind of a romance along the way. And this was just so fucking good. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. Like it reminded me so much of everything that I loved about the anime movie. It's just so cute and so beautiful. And it ended on a spot where I was like, oh my God, because I know the story with the movie. And I think there's three volumes of this manga. So like, I know it's going to be told over time and I'm just, oh, it was so freaking cute. It was so good. And then I also read the manga, There Are Things I Can't Tell You. This one is a male-male romance between these two boys. And this one was so freaking cute. I think I ended up giving this one four stars because there were a few moments where their miscommunication was kind of like getting on my nerves because it was a lot of like mixed signals, miscommunications. They weren't really able to tell each other exactly how they were feeling because you know, there are things I can't tell you. Like they're not always very honest about how they're feeling. But oh my God, this was so cute. Like they had such great chemistry mystery. And oh my gosh, this was a lot steamier than I was anticipating. Like some of the things I was witnessing with my eyes in this, I was like, whoa, like this was definitely one of the more steamier um, mangas that I've read so far, but I really enjoyed this. I thought it was so freaking good. And then the last manga that I read this month is Orange. And this is the volume one. There are actually three volumes within this collection. And then there's a second published collection of more volumes. <laughs> but this, oh my gosh, I think this is my favorite manga that I've ever read so far. I know that's dramatic to say, but I think it's true because this was just so fucking incredible. This is like a sci-fi romance where we're following this young girl who's in high school and she gets a letter from herself 10 years in the future that's like, hey, this is what's gonna happen. I need you to correct some of the mistakes that I made when I was younger. And so it's so fascinating because she gets this letter from herself saying like, okay, today this boy is gonna be transferring to your class from Tokyo and you're gonna become very close with him. And oh my God, it's just so freaking cute. Like I didn't even realize how 
how much I love sci-fi romance until I read this. Like, I was like, wow, sci-fi romance is really, like, that bitch. Like, I love anything to do with, like, time travel or some kind of, like, sci-fi element that makes the romance even stronger. Like, I'm obsessed. And I'm so glad, too, because I actually ended up buddy reading this with my friend Mikay, and we were both loving it, like, so fucking much. And it was so great to be buddy reading it at the same time as him because we were just, like, sending messages back and forth being like, can you believe? Just look at them. Look at their cute little faces. Like, I can't. I can't deal with it. I just adore them and like I love the way that this author draws their expressions. Like they're just so freaking cute. And there's also a freaking love triangle that starts happening throughout these volumes that I was like so invested in. Like it's so rare. Like I feel like love triangles can be very hit or miss for me because sometimes I really like them and then sometimes I think they're super toxic and gross. But this one was just so ooh. like both of the male love interests in this book are just so precious. Also I love that me and McKay agree that like all the men in this book are just so soft. Like all the guy characters are so fucking soft. Like there's no toxic masculinity in sight. It's just so cute. It's five stars. I would totally reread this. I cannot wait to pick up the second volume with the collection because oh my god, I'm obsessed. All right, and so on to the books that I was reading this month. The first book that I read this month is Time is a Mother by Ocean Vuong. This one is actually a poetry collection and I was interested in reading it because it was nominated at the Goodreads Choice Awards in the poetry category. And so I was like, yes, let's do it because I love reading poetry this time of year. I don't know why I always crave it around winter time. And this was actually an audiobook that I listened to, which was very unique for me because I don't think I've ever listened to poetry on audio. I do think, you know, after having this experience, I've learned about myself that I prefer reading poetry with my eyes instead of listening to it on audio because I don't think it had as big of an impact on me listening to it on audio as it could have if I had just read it with my eyes. But I still gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was just so beautifully written. And this is the first thing that I've read from this author, but I do have uh, their other book, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, and that's one that I'm hoping to get to at some point next year. Here's just an example of the writing so you can see how beautiful this shit is. It says, I promise you I was here. I felt things that made death so large it was indistinguishable from air, and I went on destroying inside it like wind in a storm. Is that not so stunning? Like, wow. And then the next book that I read this month was Kiss Her Once For Me, which this is the same author as The Charm Offensive, which is one of my favorite romance books that I've ever read. And so it's safe to say that I went into this one with some pretty high expectations and it did not disappoint because if you watched my best books of the year video then you will know that this made it into like my top five of the year like that's how much I love this and it's so cute because in this book we have so many of my favorite tropes happening okay because we have Ellie who's getting into this like fake marriage kind of situation fake dating situation with this guy named Andrew and then what ends up happening is that she falls for his sister instead which like oh my god I'm obsessed I love the idea of this I also love that Ellie is a uh, demisexual and bisexual as a protagonist, which I just thought was so unique. I love that representation. I also love that both of these women are such huge Swifties and the amount of Taylor Swift references in this book was just incredible. I just thought the chemistry between these two women was like flying off the page, like kicking my feet and shit with how much I loved their chemistry. They were so freaking cute together. And also, you know, something that I think is unique is the fact that this is kind of like a Christmas themed romance story, you know, because all of it takes place around Christmas. And usually I'm not the biggest fan of like holiday themed romance books. They're just not usually my cup of tea personally, but I love this so much. Like this is one that I can see myself rereading every Christmas. Like it's so fucking cute. This was easily a five star for me. One of my favorite books that I read this year. <laughs> and then I finally read Sign Here by Claudia Lux. This is one that I've been highly anticipating for quite some time now. This one's kind of like a thriller, kind of like horror book. Like I don't really know exactly how I would categorize this, but in this story, it's so unique and so cool because we're following this character named Pyo. Peyote, Peyote, I think is how you say it. And he works on the fifth floor of hell. Like quite literally, he works in hell. And it's really entertaining because he's trying to get a promotion and the only way that he can do that is to get this family to sell their soul to him. But it's also really interesting because we not only follow this character who's working in hell, but we also follow the family of like who he's trying to like get their souls. And it's so entertaining because this family, oh my gosh, they're major like rich people murder kind of like shady weird vibes. Like I just love following this family and we kind of follow the point of view of the dad in the family and the daughter and we get to kind of learn like their family secrets there's like this lake house that they go to it's just very uh you know it kind of reads like the typical thriller in that way when you read from the family's perspective but then reading about his job in hell makes this book feel very like just on the verge of like fantasy like magical realism or horror or whatever it's just very interesting i ended up giving this book four stars and the only reason why i didn't rate it higher is because there's this character in this book named calamity 
and we get a lot of her backstory and her history and I found those chapters to be so incredibly boring and just kind of unnecessary when it came to like the overall story. Like I just feel like the author was trying to do a little bit too much there with those storylines and I just didn't particularly care but this book still gets four stars because I thought it was so freaking unique like I've never read anything like this. I also just thought the family was so freaking interesting that we were following in this book like they were just really fun characters to follow because all of them were so fucked up and I was just so curious to see what they would do next. And then I read All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham and this is the same author as the Fl A Flicker in the Dark or whatever that last thriller was. I was kind of nervous when I was jumping into this one because I had DNF'd A Flicker in the Dark and I know that was like a really popular thriller and I just didn't really get the hype with that one. And so this one, you know, it's a December book of the month pick but this one actually doesn't publish until January. So I was pretty excited to get the chance to read it this month. Starting this book, I was kind of like, okay, this is reading like exactly like A Flicker in the Dark where I just kind of felt like the writing was very, you know, kind of basic and simplistic. It read like every other thriller that you read, you know, because the premise is so simplistic. It's like a mom who like her little boy goes missing. The typical thriller thing where they think that she might have had something to do with her son going missing because her mental health state is not the best and there's something going on with her. And, you know, so for the first half of this book, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, this is probably going to be like a three star read. Like, I don't really know. But then, oh my gosh, the ending of this book was actually so shocking and I became so invested in the second half of the story. Like, it just kept going in a direction that I was not expecting it to go. And so I ended up having a lot of fun with this one. I actually gave it four stars, which was pretty surprising, you know, just considering like how much I was really not enjoying the beginning that much. But like, wow, the ending was pretty impressive. And I feel like this author had a few tricks up her sleeve that I was not expecting. Then I read Killers of a Certain Age. This was the first book that I read in the reading vlog that I ended up doing this month. So I'll have the reading vlog linked down below if you missed it. This one is a thriller where we follow these women who are in their 60s and they are all assassins and they are having their kind of like retirement vacation getaway after they have been working for this company called the museum for like most of their lives and now they feel like there's somebody from their company that has been sent out to try and kill them and this book I ended up giving this book three stars I thought it was just okay I feel like this is more of a me thing though because I don't usually love books that follow like assassins in general but I had just heard that this book was really unique and really fun and it definitely was like I enjoyed the women a lot in this story they cracked me up like some of their one-liners in this book had me dying of laughter this also gave me major like charlie's angels vibes at times which i also thought was really fun but overall i gave this one three stars it's not super memorable and i feel like as the story progressed i was just getting a little bit more and more bored with the storyline i also finally ended up reading our wives under the sea which this is a book that i've been wanting to read ever since i heard about it releasing this summer this one is this like horror novel i don't know if it's exactly horror i don't know if i would call this horror but it's kind of like a speculative fiction story that's about these two women who are married. One of the women go on this, you know, under the sea expedition. They're on this like submarine, but the submarine ends up like dropping to like the lowest farthest depths of the ocean. And they're down there for months. When her wife comes back up to the surface, she's not exactly the same as she used to be. And this story was just so gorgeously written. It was so sad and so lonely and talks a lot about grief and like relationships feeling like they're ending and like not really recognizing the person that you're in love with anymore and it was just so gorgeous it was so beautifully written I feel like the horror in this book is very subtle and I feel like that's why I'm nervous that maybe people will go into this book with the wrong expectations because I don't think the horror is a very obvious like in your face thing with this book it's a very quiet creeping on your subconscious kind of horror which is honestly like my favorite kind of horror but I thought this was so freaking good like it's definitely one of the best like well-written books that I've read this year because the writing in this was so stunning. I actually did in the reading vlog that I did while I was reading this this month, I did quote a few of the different quotes throughout this book that I really enjoyed. So again, I'll link that down below if you want to see that vlog. But yeah, this ended up being a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. I thought this was really good. And then I ended up reading Mad Honey. This is a book that I was really interested in reading after the Goodreads Choice Awards because this book was highly voted on and a lot of people let me know that this is something they thought I would really love. So I'm so glad that I finally read it this month. This one is hard to describe for the genre because it's kind of like a contemporary story that has this like mystery and thriller feel to it because in this story we're following this mom named Olivia who is super close to her son named Asher and her son Asher is getting accused of murdering his girlfriend and so this story in a lot of ways it does feel kind of like a mystery thriller as like this murder is starting to unravel and something about this book is that we do get a lot of like courtroom scenes with her son in the courtroom honestly like that's what kind of made this book a little bit like slow for me at times is 
because the courtroom scenes would just go on and on and on. We also do get uh, the girlfriend, Lily, we get her point of view, but like kind of in flashback chapters. So like we get to see what happened before she died and kind of like memories from her childhood and different things like that. And this story also covers a topic that I was not expecting for this story to talk about. I feel like there's something that gets revealed in the plot about 200 pages into it that definitely changes the nature of this story. I do talk about this quite a bit in the vlog that I just posted as well. So again, I'll have that link down below if you want to know a little bit more information. But I ended up giving this one four stars. I thought this book was really good and I definitely appreciate what this book takes on with this topic because I feel like this book is just really relevant and it's touching on something that I think is a really important subject. And the author's note at the end almost made me emotional. So there's that. <laughs> and then the last book that I read this year was a romance. It was A Dash of Salt and Pepper. And this is a male male romance that I've been pretty interested in reading for a while because it involves a kitchen. We're following this guy named Xavier and he's going to be moving back to this small town in Maine where there's a population of about 9,000. And he's going to be working in the restaurant of this guy named Logan. And so in this romance, you know, we're following these two leads who they kind of have this like almost like enemies to lovers vibe at the beginning because they really butt heads. The guy who's the chef Logan, he has a daughter, which is like, you know, giving major like single dad vibes. I have such mixed feelings about this book because there were some things that I really loved about it and then there were some things that I didn't love so much. Like for example, some of their banter felt like it was so freaking cute and had me like laughing and it was just so adorable and then some of it felt just like a little bit forced and I wasn't a huge fan of the writing style in general in this book because we only get the point of view of Xavier in this book first of all and I think this book could have really benefited from having that second point of view because it got a little bit tiring to only be in Xavier's head. The writing honestly made it feel a little bit more like young adult in a way because the main character is just so like chipper at times or he's so like sarcastic in his head almost to the point where he kind of like reads like a moody teenager in my opinion and I also just feel like you know as I was saying like sometimes the banter between these two was so freaking good and then sometimes it just felt so like awkward or forced or just kind of like cringy so I just have such mixed feelings about this book and I feel like sometimes the characters would just do things that I just didn't fully understand why they were reacting so strongly to things. It was just a very confusing um, experience reading this book. I ended up giving this one three stars because there was so much that I loved about it. Overall it was very forgettable for me. All right so those are all of the books that I read in the month of December. I cannot believe that December is already you know at the end here like that is so crazy. I think my favorite thing that I read this month was Orange Volume 1. Like this collection was absolutely incredible, life-changing. I cannot wait to reread this in the future but you'll have to let me know how many books did you read in the month of December? What were your favorite books that you read this month? What were your least favorite books? Let me know all of the information and also let me know if you've read any of these books that I read this month. Let me know what your thoughts are on them and I'm so excited for all of my end of the year content videos. The only videos I have left that are about my 2022 reading still is my stats video which will hopefully be the next video that I post after this which includes all of my you know stats from the whole year so like which genres I was reading the most, whether I was reading male or female authors more, whether I've been reading authors that are new to me or authors that I've read before, all that fun stuff. And then after that it's going to be my tier ranking every book that I read this year video which is a lot because I read over 200 books this year which is just totally wild. Once again this is just a reminder to go and check out Top Cash Back and earn some money back on all of the things you're spending this holiday season. You can use the link in my description to go and sign up for Top Cash Back today and get a $10 sign up bonus when you spend at least $25. And thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!